He's like, oh, tell. <laughs> I have friends coming over and I have promised them the quintessential Taiwanese breakfast. Here's what's on the menu. Xiaobing, a savory, flaky pastry with a hint of Chinese spices. The Tiao, call it the Chinese donut, unparalleled in fluffiness. And of course, soy milk or doujiang. After you try to bowl of the fresh homemade variety, you will never go store-bought again. These three items are all staples of busy mornings all over China, Taiwan and Hong Kong and many other places in Asia. But outside of Asia they're kinda hard to find because most Chinese or Taiwanese restaurants don't offer breakfast. So I've been trying to recreate this iconic breakfast menu for a really long time. I tried countless different recipes and failed many many times. But I finally came up with what I believe to be the perfect from scratch recipe for the full Taiwanese breakfast. I'm excited to convince these two guys who are serious foodies and fear critics. This will be a little bit of a deep dive because there are a lot of bad recipes out there and I want to get the facts straight for once but I promise you you'll be a master of Taiwanese breakfast after this. So let's begin. Youtiao is basically a deep fried piece of dough but of course it's not that simple. What really makes a Youtiao a Youtiao is the signature shape, the super crunchy exterior and the fluffy honeycomb interior. And this is where things get interesting. You see Youtiao are not leavened by yeast. So traditionally a leavening agent called alum or sometimes baker's ammonia was added to the dough. And a lot of people and recipes claim that this is the only way to get that signature texture. The good news is that's kind of bull. And here's why. When your dough is exposed to heat, your alum or baker's ammonia will break down and release carbon dioxide gas which then inflates your dough from the inside. But alum is just a traditional leavening agent with downsides and health concerns attached. Now guess what other substance does pretty much exactly the same thing? It's your good old baking powder. So for about two cups of flour, one tablespoon of baking powder works great. And I'm also adding an extra half teaspoon of baking soda, which is alkaline and therefore will relax the gluten inside the dough, but also help with the browning later on. Then go in with half a teaspoon of salt and you really just need a little bit and then combine your dry ingredients. Okay, now let's go for the next challenge. In order to get that light yet chewy Yotiao texture, a lot of recipes call for some kind of added protein. There are basically two camps. There's team milk and then there's team egg. So I put both to the test and confirmed by my hungry girlfriend, milk was the clear winner. The egg version came out quite dense and even slightly unpleasant in taste. No. Yeah. Tastes like bread. Just bread. The milk on the other hand worked wonders and created this fluffy, airy, light yotia. So to my dry ingredients I'm adding some cold milk from the fridge and a tablespoon of oil for a soft and easy to handle dough. Roughly mix everything together until just combined, then cover the dough with some plastic and let it rest for a little bit. 15 minutes later the dough will be really soft and ready for good old kneading. A few minutes of kneading will be enough for this recipe and if your dough is on the stickier side you can just slap it against your working surface a couple of times and that will help. Finally rub your dough with a very small amount of oil, like half a teaspoon will be enough. Put your oiled dough in a Ziploc bag and then with the help of a straw suck the air out. I know this looks a little weird but it will help. Now your dough is ready to hang out in the fridge at least overnight. This long rest is really important to develop the gluten inside the dough so really don't skip this step if you want good yotiao. You see temperature really affects the leavening process and if you have half cold yotiao then your fried yotiao will end up with this unpleasantly dense center in the middle so don't do that. But straight from the bag without kneading roll out your dough into a long-ish shape roughly the thickness of a chopstick. Don't make it round because the goal is to slice it into these similar sized strips. Pro tip, if your flattened dough gets too large then slice your strips in half. They really shouldn't be longer than a pen or something like that. And here's how to create that signature Yotiao shape, street food style. Get a skewer and dip it into some water. Then press to create a groove into one of the strips and then take a second strip and place it on top. Now with your skewer press it in really really well. Home style recipes will tell you to do this pressing with a chopstick but I really recommend going for the skewer if you can and here's why. One of the secrets to a great and fluffy yotiao is the signature shape that kind of looks like a flower or a butterfly. The butterfly shape though it allows the yotiao to expand in just the right way for perfect puffage. And this is also the reason why we smeared our dough with a little bit of oil before resting it overnight. The coating of oil keeps the wings of your yotiao from sticking together but we still need the dough to 
come together in the center in order for your yotio not to fall apart during the frying. And here's where the skewer comes in. It is much thinner than a chopstick and allows you to precisely apply pressure rather than just mushing your yotio together in the middle which is kind of what happens with a chopstick. But other than that, the last step would get plenty of oil, really really hot, I'd say at least 200 Celsius, which is 400 Fahrenheit, and then give your yotio a final stretch before dropping them into the oil and frying them one by one. You have to start rotating them around in the oil for even heat distribution as soon as you can because these guys will puff up fast, like under a minute. Remember to get them out before they are too brown and crispy and then cool them on a wired rack. This is what your yotiao should look like. Next, we whip up some fresh soy milk. Just two ingredients, soybeans and water. How hard can it be, right? So the basic idea is you get some dried soybeans, you rehydrate them, then you blend them in water to extract all the good stuff, strain, and then that's your soy milk. But man, when it comes to the details, recipes are all over the place. Luckily, I've tried them all and here is what I have found to be the best method to make soy milk. First, rinse a cup of dried soybeans and cover with two liters or half a gallon of filtered water or bottled water. We'll use that soaking water for the soy milk later on and it's also literally one of two ingredients so that's why I like to not go for a tap water. You'll want to soak your soybeans overnight at least 10 hours and then the next day you can strain them off but don't forget to keep the water and then put them into a blender. Let's address something real quick. Some people say you have to remove the skins of the soybeans to get the best flavor. And of course I've tried that, I wouldn't leave you hanging but the result wasn't anything extraordinary. For one it was a pain in the ass to peel them and then secondly in terms of texture or flavor it actually made the soy milk even worse. At least that's what I felt so just forget about the whole thing. Add some of your soaking water to the blender with the soybeans and then blend away until your soybean slurry looks a little something like a delicious vanilla milkshake. Now dump that milkshake into the largest pot you have at home because this shit will foam like crazy, you'll see in a second, and then carefully bring to a boil. So that foaming really is kind of a problem. Like you'll see a little bit of foam appear on top while you heat your soy milk, but that is nothing. Because the second the milk hits 100 degrees Celsius, it's gonna go all Diet Coke and Mentos on you. I have like a 10 liter pot for two liters of soy milk and that is barely enough to contain the foamage. And believe me, you don't wanna scrub this your stove. It's the worst. I, I have learned the hard way. So if you don't have a gigantic pot but you still want to avoid like that soy milk inferno in your kitchen, what you can do is just to make sure and watch very closely that your soy milk never reaches the boiling point. When it gets close you can just lift it off the heat and just set it aside for a second, maybe put it back and just control the heat like this. For the recipe and the taste of the soy milk itself it's really not a problem if you stay below the boiling point so don't worry about that. This is just about your safety. I like to keep my soy milk at this high temperature for just about a minute after which it is ready to strain. I'm using my super rugged looking nut milk bag which I can wholeheartedly recommend. These things are affordable and really easy to handle. You can also use a cheesecloth or even a very very clean kitchen towel if you want but I find them a little bit cumbersome so go with a nut milk bag if you can. Anyway, strain your soy milk and squeeze out as much liquid as you can. A tool like a potato masher works wonders here because this stuff is hot so make sure to not burn yourself like I did during this next step which is squeezing the last drops of liquid out of your soybeans with your bare hands. We are getting really really close, all we have to do now is to simmer the soy milk for another 20 minutes. This last step removes the grassy, beany flavor from the beans and it helps making your soy milk slightly sweet and creamy. And here you go, this is your delicious and fresh doja. If you like, of course you can also sweeten your soy milk, I like to add about one tablespoon of cane sugar to the amount that we are making here. but. You do you. Now let's finish this recipe with a bang and make some irresistible Xiaobing. Xiaobing is this super flaky, baked, savory pastry. What I love about it is that it has a very distinct Chinese aroma to it thanks to a spice mixture that coats the individual layers of the Xiaobing inside. And I say we start with that. So the trick is to make a seasoned roux, which is basically a paste of oil and flour. And for this you want to heat some oil on medium heat and add in flour. Make sure to stir well until you get a smooth paste, it shouldn't be lumpy but it also shouldn't feel liquid and then you can add a pinch of salt, some finely ground citron peppercorns and five spice powder. 
If you have ever been to China, you will definitely recognize this smell from the streets. So keep stirring on medium low heat for around five minutes and then set your seasoned roux aside to cool down to room temperature. In the meantime, we're gonna make a hot water dough by mixing flour with a pinch of salt and you guessed it, hot water. Using hot water does something to the gluten that I don't quite understand, but I know it results in a very flaky texture. So it's great if you're doing something baked or fried, AKA it's perfect for xiaobing. Combine your dough into a rough ball and then let it rest for about 15 minutes so it's easier to handle. Now you can knead for a little bit and add a touch of flour if your dough is too sticky. Then rest for another 15 minutes or until your roux has come to room temperature. Now roll out your dough into a thick band and then fold both ends into the middle, folding your dough into three layers. Now roll out into a rectangle one more time. Now we can spread a thin layer of our seasoned roux on the dough, leaving a lengthwise margin along the bottom of the rectangle. Carefully roll the dough together and then by pinching, seal your dough along the margin. Now you gotta separate your dough into six equal pieces and twisting them off will help you make sure the roux doesn't kind of ooze out. Seal as best you can and then shape the dough into six balls. With each ball, repeat the inward third fold from before three times. If you have a little bit of roux coming out of the dough that is fine, just try to tuck it back in. So after folding for the third time, you don't roll out your dough again, instead you can cover it to prevent it from drying and just set it aside to rest. A few moments later... Brush the smooth side of your folded dough ball with some water and dunk into untoasted sesame seeds. One last time, roll it out into an even rectangle. It shouldn't be thicker than a chopstick. Thinner kind of means crispier, but it also means that they're gonna be harder to open up after baking. So the thickness of a chopstick is just right. And for the last step, put your raw shaobing on a preheated tray and bake at 200 Celsius or 400 Fahrenheit for around 20 minutes or until golden brown and crispy on top. So I realized this was quite a lot of work and it's probably not gonna become part of your new Sunday morning brunch routine, but on the good side, your soy milk will last in the fridge for like at least four days. But when it comes to Xiaobing and Youtiao, I like to freeze them just like this. They will last in the freezer for like a month or so and if you wanna eat them, just pop them in the oven or put them on the toaster for just a couple of minutes and they will be ready to go. All right guys, we have finally mastered the theory of Taiwanese breakfast, but let's see how it performs in practice. It's 11 o'clock and my friends are coming in time just out of the oven. How's that bro? Oil is heating for the yotio. Smoking. I just, I milked the soy and here is the milk. Out of all the batches that I've made in the past few days, this is the best one. I don't know, this is not good. This is not good. Okay, 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 okay. It's thin. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's smelling really good. So, buddy? Hello. Good morning. Are you ready for your hotel? My grandpa is always eating this in the morning. Yes? Yeah, your hotel. Where does your grandpa live? In Beijing? Um, no, in Chongqing. In Chongqing. In North China. They're good. Soy milk. Xiaobing. Yo. For egg to stuff. In between. The middle. Mm. The middle. Mmm. Mm. That's what I like to see. Mm. Hot damn. Man, put it in. Describe, describe what you're feeling, my friend. I feel dough, I feel egg, I feel grease, I feel taste. I have to feel it. I can't speak. Alright guys, I don't know about you, I am really really happy with the results. Give this recipe a try if you have been missing Chinese or Taiwanese breakfast. It's, it's good stuff and let me know what you thought or what you think I might have been missing. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for weekly food inspiration from all over the world. And of course, thank you so so much to everybody supporting me over on Patreon. I know we're a very small team for now, but it really means a whole lot to me, especially in here. Well, this is it for today guys, but I hope to see you in the next video. Yeah.